Welcome to part 3 of Geometry of Straight Lines. In this video, we are going over some questions just to illustrate how to apply the theorems that we've done so far. If you haven't had a chance to watch part 1 and part 2, I encourage you to do so because we discuss each of the six theorems that will apply here today. Without wasting time, let's get started. In question 1.1, we are given the statement that P is equal to R and asked to provide the reason. Now let's locate P and R. There is P and there is R. If you look at the shape that we have here, it's the letter X. And this is typical of vertically opposite angles. Moving on to 1.2, T plus U equals 2. That is an incomplete statement. And this is how and the reason is also not right given. Vertically Let's locate angles T and, and U from our diagram. There is T, there is U. If we add these two angles, what would we get? Now, one thing about T and U is that they are adjacent to each other. This is typical of angles on a straight line. T plus U is equal to 180 degrees because they are angles on a straight line. Moving on to 1.3. We're given the angle P, and it looks like we have to add three other angles to it to get a total of 360 degrees. Let us locate angle P in our diagram. This is angle P, and since the total is 360 degrees, it is reasonable to assume that it has to be a complete revolution or angles around a point which form a circle. So obviously here we're going to have to add P, Q, R, and S. That's the only way we can get 360 degrees. All right. So P plus Q plus R plus S. This is what gives us 360 degrees. And as I've already stated, angles around a point. Moving on to 1.4. Q equals 2. That's an incomplete statement. And to give us a clue as to what Q should be equal to, we're going to look at the reason which is provided corresponding angles. Q is equal to an angle which corresponds to it. Right? Corresponding angles, as we discussed in part 2, is the letter F in fun. These two angles here would be corresponding. So let's look at Q. And try and locate an angle which could potentially be corresponding to it. Okay, so this is Q. And I'm going to highlight the letter F. Right, this one is going to be upside down. There we go. So Q can only be equal to U if we're using corresponding angles. 1.5. S plus T equals 2. That's an incomplete statement, and looks like the reason is not given also. So let's locate S and T. We have S here, and we have T there. I'm going to highlight what I see. In fun angles, we have the letter U, right, which can come in different orientations. And this is one of the orientations of that same shape. And the letter U in fun has to do with co-interior angles, which add up to 180 degrees which means that S plus T is equal to 180 degrees. And the reason, co-interior angles, and we also have to state the parallel lines. There can be no co-interior angles if we don't have parallel lines. Moving on, 1.6, R equals 2. We need a clue because R is equal to a few angles actually. But fortunately, we're given a clue that we have to look for alternate angles. Alternate angles, is the letter N in fun, which can also come in different orientations, just like the others. So all these are illustrations of how you can get alternate angles. Those two angles are equal, even these two angles. And those two angles are equal. So let us locate R. Here we go. There is R. Now what is R alternate to? I'm going to look for the letter Z in this case. There we go. So R is alternate to T. R equals to T. 1.7. P plus S equals 2. The statement is incomplete and no reason is given. Let's locate P 
and S. There we go. That's P and S. And P and S lie on this straight line which I've highlighted there. That's number one. And number two, P and S are also adjacent to each other, which means that P and S, if we add the two angles, we would get 180 degrees. We get the semicircle. That is why P plus S is 180 degrees. And the reason, angles on a straight line. Then 1.8 V equals 2. The statement is incomplete, but we're given a reason corresponding angles. What are corresponding angles? Is the letter F, as we said earlier. These two angles are corresponding. And remember that the letter F can have different orientations. Just watch out for that. So let's locate V. There is V. And let's highlight the letter F, which would go with V. There we go. So V is corresponding to R. V equals to R, corresponding angles. Question 1.9, R plus some mysterious angle equals to some mysterious number. We obviously need a clue here. And the clue is given as a reason, core interior angles. Here we go. That's the angle R. And core interior is the letter U in fun which can also have different orientations. So watch out for all of these orientations here. Yeah? Right, so if that is R, I'm going to highlight that. R and U are core interior, meaning they add up to 180 degrees. We can now complete our statement, R plus U equals to 180 degrees, core interior angles. And finally, 1.10, W plus T equals to, the statement is incomplete, reason is not given. There is the angle W and that's the angle T. Now W and T lie on this straight line. That's the first point. And second point, they are adjacent to each other. And they form a semicircle. If we add the two angles, they would form a semicircle. Since they form a semicircle, W and T add up to 180 degrees and the reason angles on a straight line. In question 2, we're given this beautiful diagram and we've been given the task to determine the values of x, y and z. First thing I see is two pairs of parallel lines. I'm going to highlight it's important for us to see all the pairs of parallel lines. So far, we've only discussed geometry of straight lines. We have not yet discussed geometry of 2D shapes. So I will be avoiding using sum of angles in a triangle to solve this question. I will stick to geometry of straight lines. In this case, I'm going to look at the green parallel lines, the ones that I've highlighted green. Further highlight the line QS to show the letter Z. And the letter Z, remember, in fun is the letter N as well. So this letter N right, can also be the letter Z, which is alternate angles. If we go back and look at the letter Z, which I've highlighted in green, angle Q2 is equal to angle 48. And the reason, alternate angles, semicolon, then you state your parallel lines. QR is parallel to PS. It's a good idea to add any new information to your diagram. Now that we have that full angle at Q, do you realize that angle P and angle Q are core interior? That's because I'm focusing on the line QR and the line PS, which are parallel to each other. And... This is your Q, this is your P, and then R, S. These two angles are core interior. That is angle at Q and the angle at P. That being said, the angle at Q is angle Q1 plus angle Q2, which is 52 degrees plus 48 degrees, giving us 100 degrees. Now, all we are saying is the angle P 
plus the angle Q is equal to 180 degrees. Reason, core interior angles. Then we state our parallel lines QR parallel to PS. Since the angle Q is 100 degrees, I'm just going to add it to my equation and also replace angle P with X. My next statement, therefore, is going to be X plus 100 degrees equals to 180 degrees. And all I need to do now is to solve for X by taking that 100 degrees over the equal sign to make it negative 100 degrees. And therefore, my final answer is going to be 80 degrees. Now that I have X, it's easier to get Y and Z. If you turn your attention to the lines that I've highlighted pink, X and Y are alternate angles. They form the letter Z. So we can say that angle Y is equal to X, which is 80 degrees. And the reason, alternate angles PQ parallel TW. Let's add this information to our diagram. For X, we got 80 degrees. And for y, we also got 80 degrees. Now we need to find z. Since ps and qr are parallel, let's turn our attention then to the parallel lines ps and qr. It is easy to see the letter f. I will extract it and put it here. We have 80 degrees here. And we have Z here. Z and Y are corresponding angles. So it means Z is also equal to 80 degrees. Let's go on to question 3. In this diagram, we're given three parallel lines. And once again, we've been tasked to find the values of X, Y, and Z. Let's analyze our diagram and find the easiest place for us to start. Right away, I see the letter Z there for alternate angles. I'm going to write down my equation. My equation is going to look like this. 3Y minus 49 degrees equals to Y plus 13 degrees. And the reason for this, alternate angles, QR is parallel, SW. Now, all I have to do is to solve for Y. By collecting like terms, I'm going to get the following equation. 3y minus y gives me 2y, and the sum of those two angles is 62 degrees. Dividing by 2, both sides, gives me 31 degrees. Now I know the value of y is 31 degrees. I'm going to add this in my diagram because I see there's a y here. This is 31 degrees. The next thing that I see is that at point Q, we have a revolution. All the angles are there, which makes it easy for us to solve for Z. Let's set up the equation for finding Z. Z plus Y plus 3Y minus 49 degrees is equal to 360 degrees. The reason? Angles around a point. Now you will recall that we already have the value of y from the previous question. We will now substitute the value of y into our equation. Simplifying gives. Isolating z, we have z equals to 360 minus 75 degrees, which is equal to 285 degrees. Now let's add that to our diagram. To solve for x, the first thing that I see is letter u in front, or rather, co-interior angles. Let's set up our equation. x plus y equals to 180 degrees, and the reason is co-interior angles. We already have the value of y. Let's substitute it into our equation. Now, isolating x by taking 31 degrees over the equal sign, giving us an answer of x equals to 149 degrees.
This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you found this helpful. Watch out for our next video where we will be discussing geometry of 2D shapes. Until next time, goodbye.